Uh, next we're going to check our pressure protection valve setting, which should be set with our one of our orange hoses disconnected and the, the truck at an idle, compressor running, and we want to take our, our pressure off of our wet tank that the, the pressure protection valve feeds. And we adjust that pressure protection valve to read 100 psi on our gauge. No more, no less, give or take, uh, just with the, uh, once again, with the truck at an idle. Don't rev the truck up. Just maintain an idle speed and we adjust that, that pressure protection valve to 100 psi. First valve we lose is we're going to shut off our wheel end valves just so we don't lose any air pressure we've got there. And do that on all of the, all the wheels, but start with this one. Disconnect one of our orange hoses. Okay. Then our pressure protection valve is attached to our wet tank, which is generally located in the frame someplace, either on, on the wet tank existing one or a wet tank that we will supply if you have uh, an ADIS air dryer system per se. But this, this particular vehicle uh, is located just under, right behind the fuel tank here, so we'll slide underneath there and go to setting all that up. Okay, so this is our pressure protection valve in the nutshell, you can see it outside of the truck. Important thing to, to, to know about these is it's a directional valve. The air must flow through the valve in one direction only. And if you have a look at it, you can see from there, you'll see there's a small arrow on the valve that points in the direction. So in this case, the air would come in here and exit through that direction, just following the arrow. On the bottom, you have the two ports. They both go into the same channel, and that, this is where we pull our, our, our pressure from. That's what's the, the line that's running down that I've got my pressure gauge into is coming off of that port as well. And sometimes you may find this actually located on the bottom of our valve box. It's located underneath it. If you follow that 5 8 line up to it, you might find that. But keep in mind, airflow still has to go through that valve in the same direction. So the air flow would come into the bottom, or arrow in this case would be to the bottom of the valve box. If you have to, and some people have found that, this top section can be removed. If it makes it easier for threading that port on, there's just a spring inside and a small diaphragm. Nothing really to, to go flying out of there. Um, something to keep in mind though, if you do have to remove it after it's installed on the truck, is to back that adjustment off before otherwise the whole thing can come flying apart and you may possibly lose a few pieces. But that's about it in a nutshell. Uh, big thing, make sure that the arrow is pointed in the right direction for your airflow and you shouldn't have any too many problems with that. Uh, adjust it up when you first get it, they will always come to you unadjusted so you'll have to crank it in quite a ways to start with in order to get your adjustment so you'll see it'll cycle back and forth on and off until it gets up to a, uh, above the 75 psi setting that shuts off our system gives our alarm 95 psi will keep it maintained and then at that point you can slowly turn this thing about an eighth of a turn to a quarter of a turn at a time when you're adjusting it and watch your gauge because the pressure will slowly rise it's not going to be a, a really automatic uh, pressure change so you have to kind of be patient with it and slowly crank it up until you get your 100 psi adjustment on there if it stays check it again twice sometimes we can check it two or three times just make sure that we've got a good setting keeping in mind always bring the air pressure in the truck down to about 80 psi in between tests just allow everything to build up again because this comes off the wet tank the wet tank will also feed our primary and secondary tanks so at the same time we're filling the wet tank, we're filling those tanks as well. So it allows the whole system to, to come up to pressure equally. Uh, if you don't have the gauge that we have here, you can also adjust that with the gauges on the truck if you allow the whole system to come down to the 80 PSI and watch your truck gauges. They will all come up to where with the system running, you will see that 100 PSI on the truck gauges as well if you go that route.
So this is our, our pressure protection valve, which looks just like a, an air regulator to a lot of people, but in fact it works slightly different. And we have a, let's see, if you see that we have a cap on top of there right now. So pull that off, it locks it out. In order to adjust it, we have to remove that cap and then pop the, the lever up for adjustment. At this point, we turn the tire boss system back on again and we'll run the truck at an idle and monitor the, the pressure gauge to make sure that we're getting 100 PSI coming out once again at the idle with the, with the, the orange hose off of our frame hanger. So just a sec, I'll just go flash the truck up and turn the system back on again. I'll be right back with you. <laughs> okay, so you listen to, as you can see, we have 100 PSI registering on our air pressure gauge with the system at an idle and with the flow coming out of our, our frame hangers to maintain that, that pressure. That makes sure that uh, we stay well above our 95 PSI threshold where the, the, the system will shut down and give you a low air warning when it gets down to 75 PSI, 75 to 80. So once that pressure is established now what we're generally going to do is take it and we'll pump the system down again to where the, the whole truck system is down to about 80 PSI and then allow it to build again just to confirm that we have our 100 PSI setting as it comes up to, to the, uh, the, the setting on their pressure protection valve. So I'm just going to go pump the system back down again and we'll run it once more up to the 100 PSI. So I'll be right back with you. So now that we've confirmed our pressure protection valve setting maintains 100 PSI, we make sure we lock the adjustment knob down, put our lock cover over top and secure it with either lock or with a nylon tie, whatever is handy for you, just so that it doesn't get adjusted and out of place. And that's about all we know got for the pressure protection valve.